Now, joining us on the program tonight, very pleased to have with us Dr. A.W.R. Hawkins, who uh, writes for uh, Andrew Breitbart's uh, Big Site, uh, latest column we're talking about in humanevents.com. And Dr. Hawkins, thank you, sir, for joining us on the program tonight. Hey, Cam, thanks for having me. You bet. Uh, all right, so you've got a, a post up, uh, Fast and Furious goes all the way to the White House. And, and as you point out, Fast and Furious, uh, quote-unquote, Gunwalker, they've both entered the national lexicon. If you mention Fast and Furious to somebody, you know, you may still get uh, some folks thinking you're talking about a Vin Diesel movie, but a lot of Americans are going to know what you're talking about. Uh, and you say majority of Americans know that they have something to do with the selling of guns to straw purchasers in the U.S., but there's still some information, some key information, that a lot of folks are not aware of. That's right. I mean, you know, a lot of folks, Cam, don't know the specifics. They don't know, as I mentioned today, that 34 of the weapons sold were 50 caliber sniper rifles, which, as you know, and probably most of your listeners know, that has a 2,000-meter kill range in the hands of someone that knows what they're doing. And I would dare say a military expert could probably kill from a further distance than that. Uh, they also don't know that upwards of 1,300 of those weapons are still on the streets, not only in Mexico, but there are some in the Phoenix area, mm -hmm. some on the southern border. Uh, and they also don't know that the ATF, the DHS, which is a uh, Department of Homeland Security, that ICE, that the DEA, the FBI, the IRS, and the Department of Justice were all involved in this action. It wasn't just the ATF. And beyond that, that the White House was involved. Those, that's a quick overview. Most people don't know a lot of what I mentioned there at the tail end. Yeah, absolutely. And, and you know, I think uh, that is largely because the mainstream media decided to ignore, for the most part, the last House oversight hearing in which you had Bill Newell talk about. He was asked, did you talk about Fast and Furious? How many conversations did you have with your buddy Kevin O'Reilly, who's on the uh, staff of the National Security Council, how many conversations did you have about Fast and Furious? He said, well, you know, we talked about it a couple of times. He said, I, I don't think there was any conversation that was specifically about you know, Fast and Furious only, but uh, you know, a couple of times. And, and you know, it's amazing. Uh, there's been no follow-up from any of the so-called investigative reporters, like at the Washington Post. You know, they, they've run big stories on the hidden life of guns, but when the former head of the uh, Phoenix field office says, yeah, I talked to the guy in the National Security Council about Fast and Furious, they just kind of yawn and look away. Oh, yeah. And if you were to back up, let's back up four years. Let's back up five years. Let's say that they found out that Halliburton had emailed Dick Cheney or vice versa. What would have happened there? There's no scandal there, but they would have been all over the White House. The words impeachment would have been thrown up, so on and so forth. Here we have a true scandal. We have the special agent in charge, as you say, William Newell. He was a special agent in charge in Phoenix. He admits that he was in contact with Kevin O'Reilly, who is in the White House. So there you have a tie between Fast and Furious and the White House, and no one pushes this to find out how far above O'Reilly it goes. It's ridiculous. Yeah, it is. Uh, it, it is ridiculous. And so do you see, you know, I kind of thought once the debt debate <laughs> was settled one way or the other, all of a sudden would be able to talk about Fast and Furious. Uh, then the markets imploded. Then uh, S&P decided to downgrade the uh, credit rating of the United States. Um, I, you know, I, I guess the one good thing is, is that Congress is out of session until September. So if we're going to be talking about uh, these other issues, let's do it now. And then when the hearings get back, uh, when Congress gets back and we get the, uh, the, the additional hearings, because we've been told by Representative Issa there'll be at least two more hearings this year, maybe then uh, we'll, we'll see the mainstream media pick up the rest of the story. But i got to tell you, I really think it's going to be up to us to get the word out to our friends, to our coworkers, to uh, people who, who, who want better from their government. I think we're going to have to be the messenger. Oh, Cam, I agree with you 100%. And, and I can say, and this is encouraging to me, from what I see on Breitbart, on human events, or I'll speak for myself personally, no matter where it is, when I have a piece that comes out on Fast and Furious, that piece gets readership like nothing else. It outrages the common man. It outrages those Tea Party terrorists that the Democrats have told us about. It outrages them. 
because we are people who abide by law and order. We are people who obey the laws. We, we, we use our weapons lawfully, so on and so forth. And we see this regime do what they're doing, breaking who knows how many laws every day to do it. And it outrages, outrages the uh, average populace when they see these things. It does, and it should. It, it, you know, it, it should tick you off. And I don't care if you live in the Pacific Northwest. I don't care if you live up in northern Maine and you think, well, that's a long way from me. Look, the Mexican drug cartels are operating in hundreds of U.S. cities. Uh, and our government allowed the cartels to get a hold of guns when they could have stopped them. And, you know, the guns, as you say, they've been recovered. In, some of them have been recovered in Mexico. Some of them have been recovered in Phoenix. We uh, learned a couple of days ago that a couple of them were picked up in El Paso, Texas. So, you know, these guns, I don't care where you live in the United States, the guns that the U.S. government allowed to end up in the hands of criminals could turn up in your neighborhood tomorrow. That's right, Cam. And I'll tell you what I'm digging on, just a heads up. This week, I'm digging on how these guns made it across the Mexican border. No matter how it happened, it was illegal. We know that mm -hmm. because it's illegal to take them across an international border. But that was part of the plan. Part of the plan, after they were sold to straw purchasers, these guns were allowed to cross an international border so that they could be placed in the hands of cartel members. I want to know how they crossed that border because the number of illegalities that took place in that one area alone uh, would be unbelievable. Uh, yes. And, you know, it's interesting. I'm sure you've seen the uh, the stories uh, where a, a high-ranking member of the Sinaloa cartel, uh, who is on trial now, is alleging in uh, documents through his defense attorney that he and others had a, uh, had a deal uh, with the DEA where they would provide information about other cartels and they would be allowed to truck in tons of cocaine to distribute around the country. Now, again, this is, you know, this is the claim of a alleged uh, drug cartel member. So far, the DEA has denied it. But, uh, you know, you can't, <laughs> unfortunately now, as a result of Fast and Furious, you, you, you hear a crazy claim like this from a drug cartel leader, and your first response isn't, you know, how, how dare this guy try to, uh, you know, impugn our law enforcement. Now, the first response is, gosh, I mean, could that really have happened? Oh, no, you're exactly right, and and it's what you were talking about last hour that makes it even more believable because our DOJ has responded to this situation not by saying we're sorry, mm. but by passing new gun control laws on us, requiring us to report when we buy an extra rifle this week or two extra rifles this week or whatever. Uh, the fact that the response to all this has been gun control of the American people proves that there was really no plan in this other than figuring out a way – to make things harder on law-abiding citizens back here at home. And I believe they would do anything to get that done. And I'm like you. I can't take a cartel member's word for it. But at the same time, Obama is so crooked, I can't reject the cartel member's word either. Yeah, absolutely. Well, listen, uh, AWR, I appreciate you coming on the program, sir, and I look forward to doing this again very soon. Thank you, Cam. I enjoy it.